like to invite all of the team of the mission trip to come forward with me. Some of our team is actually leading out in the church service in, at Leadville Church because they have a ski trip and they started out leading out at the church service, so they will be sharing there. And some of our team members are a little bit sick today, so they couldn't join us. But if you're here, come on up. Just stand on the, anywhere on the stage with me. I <laughs> uh, just wanted people to have the visual of, of at least of the, the team members who are here with us this morning. We had 31 high school students go and uh, 10 adults and a few of the family uh, younger kids. So for a total of 44 people to go for 10 days to Dominican Republic. And the sermon this morning will come out right off the events and experiences that we had during the, the, the mission trip. Um, but before we do that, I will remind you that this week, talking about be a light, we're going to talk about mission trip. That's a way that we can be a light. Uh, all the HMS kids sharing this morning how to be a light as well. But I wanted to just mention that this week is kind of like an all hands on deck week for us because uh, we have Journey to the Cross coming up. And I wanted to say, if any of you would like to help us set up, you can come tomorrow at 9. We're going to bring all the staging to the gyms and, and start that, kind of, that process. Or Wednesday, if it's tomorrow at 9 doesn't work, come Wednesday at 3. And we will be doing, uh, setting up some of the stuff as well for the village. And then to tear all back down and take it back into storage, that is next Sunday at 9. So there you go. Sunday at 9, Wednesday at 3, and Sunday at 9. If you can come any of those times, uh, if you come Wednesday, bring your drill as we will, uh, you know, just some tools as we need that to, uh, to make Jerusalem come, you know, come to life. But... Before we go into the sermon, I just wanted to, uh, to have a prayer, and then we'll give the microphone to our students who are sharing this morning. And we do hope that it is a blessing, that it's inspiring, and that um, you come out different than you are here. And if you're watching online, uh, we do hope that the blessing reaches you just as well. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we could this morning... Uh, be blessed by the ministry of our kids in, in so many ways. Um, and we are so thankful for this campus that we can collaborate with all kinds of leadership and ministry options and discipleship. And I'm thankful, Lord, that we had the opportunity to go on this trip. I pray, I pray, Father, that every opportunity of service, that the seeds of service and ministry will not be forgotten by the students that went, that they will always choose to use their talents for you wherever you will take them to serve. And I pray that we are a community that we don't just try to keep our kids safe, but that we teach our students and our young people to follow your Holy Spirit guidance so they become arrows that go to the world and change it wherever they might be, till you come again, Lord. So thank you for allowing us to love and to serve and to experience the beautiful country of the Dominican Republic. And as we share from that, I pray that you guide and you lead, just like you did every single day over there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll be starting off with how we had to let go of our physical comfort. So for starters, our water was one of the biggest issues. Um, the government was around going around fixing pipes, so we had limited amounts and we had to like limit ourselves with how much we had to use. And we also had the power going out, sometimes even during our sermons during throughout the week at the churches, and it was kind of difficult. Um, for the rooms where we were staying at, the, there was bunk beds, a lot of them, and all of us had to fit in one room. There was a lot of suitcases around, and it was also hard to just move around. It was uncomfortable because of the heat. There wasn't AC, obviously. Um, and a lot of us just like felt like gross, sticky, like sweating all the time. 
and the bugs, a lot of us were scared for that. Mosquitoes were going around, biting us, flies everywhere, um, and our phones. A lot of us didn't have service or we didn't have time because we had to prepare for everything. Um, and the transportation, going from here all the way over there, it's a, it was a one-day trip of just going on buses and airplanes. Um, the bus over there that took us to our churches, um, on the last day of our sermons, it got a flat tire while it was like dropping people off. And for both the buses and the cars that we were using to go, everything, everyone was like so squished together, there was not a lot of space to move around. And for both of them, the speed, we weren't used to how fast people drove over there, and it was kind of a shock. The roads were also not as safe as we are used to. They were like, um, there was rocks and stuff, and just overall a lot of like motorcycles around. Um, and it was just a new experience for us that we were uncomfortable with, and an environment that we weren't used to. But what if we see things differently? When we ran out of water, we started to appreciate the little time we had to cleanse ourselves. When the power went out, we could look to the sky and see all the stars twinkling in the night. When we became disconnected from our phones, we started connecting better. We started to talk face to face. And each time the bus went over a speed bump, I thank God for good roads and actual traffic loss. <laughs> Sometimes we need to let go of the things we take for granted in order to know what we appreciate. We need to let go of our distractions or our amenities to see the things God wanted us to see. We need to let go of our wants, our worries, and our burdens and let God take care of our needs. Hello, so I'm Janae and I go to Campion. Um, so I'm going to talk about kind of four different things that fall under two categories. So fear and um, leaving people. So I was so scared to leave because my two best friends weren't going to be going. Um, one of them is here in the pews. I see her right over there. Hi, Sarah. Um, and so I was so scared that I wasn't going to be able to talk to anyone. And like, yeah, I had other friends going, but I, I like, they, they, they aren't my like day to day people and the ones that I rant to. So I was so scared to leave them. It was when we got there, um, I made new friends and um, met new people. And it was sad to see, especially my Bible worker, leave. Um, I'm not much of a crier, but when he left, I cried. <laughs> I, I, w I got so sad uh, to see him leave, thinking that I would never see him again. Um, and even though I, I don't know when I'll see him again or if I'll see him again, I know that um, I can see him in heaven one day. And so a lot of people didn't know this, <laughs> but it was my first time ever getting on an airplane and my first time ever leaving the country. So I was so scared about that. I. The first flight was, I gave it a six out of 10. It was, it was okay. So that was one of my biggest fears there. Um, my biggest fear is public speaking. <laughs> and I was a translator. So I had to speak in Spanish, which is fine. I know Spanish. But Dominican Spanish and Mexico Spanish, completely different things. I had to adjust my Spanish for them and fix what I would have thought was not a grammatical error, it was to them. So I had to fix a lot of those 
with them. And I thank my Bible worker, Abraham, for helping me a lot with that. Um, and let me tell you guys, the first day I was very monotone. I did not give any emotion whatsoever. And I'm not going to mention their name, but someone told Pastor Bazama. <laughs> and Pastor Bazama got on me and told me, you need to show emotion. You need, because since I'm the one who is actually letting them understand the sermon, I have to, in the way, give the most of the emotion rather than the preacher who is preaching for me. And so I had to be willing to get out of my comfort zone and speak and yell and move my arms and smile and be angry when I needed to be. And it was so hard. And when um, Pastor Leandro told me to do that, I opened my Bible to Deuteronomy 31.8 and it says, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. And I, I had to really um, stick to that verse and grasp onto it because if I didn't, it was going to be really hard for me to not be able to get out of my comfort zone. So my name is Sergio. And I also did translations, but there are a couple days where I helped out with construction. So I'm going to sp speak of that. So the first day I helped out in construction, it was a day where most of the guys, people in the camp, left to go see a waterfall. And now, yeah, I would love to go see a waterfall, but I felt like God was telling me, you can work here even though you might be missing out on something, this in the future will represent something. You'll be helping a cause. And the, the project that we were working on, we were building a dorm. It's still unfinished, but I hope one day I'll be able to see it finished. So the second thing, the second time I helped out in construction was during our time of relaxation, the last day there. So that was fun. I, I let go of my free time. I used that free time to help others help build. It, honestly, it was a privilege for me. And another thing that I, would talk, I like to talk about is baptism. The baptism over there was exponential. It was amazing. Uh, so I myself was baptized over there. And one of the leading reasons was Acts 22:16, and it says, why do you wait? Arise, go baptize yourself, washing your sins and calling on his name. And that hit me. I was like, what am I holding on to that's stopping me from giving my life to Jesus? What do I, hell, what do I have in my hand? It's like, what am I waiting for? Just let go of your past. Let go of whatever is holding you back and be baptized. Okay, this morning I'll be talking about the VBS and baptism numbers. Our smallest group for kids in our VBS was 5 to 10, while our largest group had 150 children. <clears throat> the total of children in all our groups on, the, on our lowest day was 297, while on our highest day, the total of children was 505. Our daily average was 360 to 370. We had only planned for 250 kids each day. <clears throat> so after day one, we quickly realized that we had to be extra creative with our supplies. Each day we would have to plan, sort things out, make sure things were cut, and as simple as possible. 
we quickly realized that we had to have everything prepped and simplified since a lot of the kids and some of the adults that were helping us didn't, didn't know how to use scissors or glue. <clears throat> now it's time for our baptism numbers. Tita's group had five to seven kids that were baptized and a lady who was crippled. My group had seven kids that were baptized. And there were three academy kids baptized on that day. In total, there were about 19 children baptized, and there were about 11 adults. In total, there were about 30 people baptized. Um, so... Uh, so um, me and Tita, we are going to be um, kind of like telling um, the different experiences that we have between like bigger groups and smaller groups. Um, so Tita is going to say the first one. So as you know, I had the big group. The first few days I had about like 60 to 70. And then by the end of the week, I had 80 to 90 kids. So it was very overwhelming for me. Um, some of the struggles my group had was listening because at first I didn't have a microphone. So it was really, really hard to communicate with them. And another struggle we had was the crafts because sometimes there was a lot of cutting involved and I didn't know if my group could use scissors or not. So we had to pre-cut everything, and it was just so hard sometimes because there was like, I had to cut like a hundred things for some kids. But luckily, I had Miss Thornton and one of the pastors from the Dominican. His name was Luke, and he helped me a lot to communicate with the kids and stuff. And by the end of the week, Pastor on Pazama ended up getting me a microphone. So it was so much better. And um, one of the highlights for my group was whenever I would hear them sing, it was just so beautiful. And um, there was a lot of mosquitoes too. But when I saw them at the baptism, so excited to get baptized, um, the mosquito bites were definitely worth it. <laughs> Uh, so for my church, it was a little smaller. It was like on average like 40 kids a night throughout the week. And then um, our last day we had about 60 kids, which was a lot to handle. Um, but there was like, it was kind of different because like our first couple, like our th three first nights, um, we didn't have a translator. So it was really hard to like communicate with like the kids and their VBS slash like Sabbath school leaders. Um, but there was, on our fourth night, um, the translator from the other school that came um, helped us, which was very helpful, and we were able to, like, explain to the kids, like, how to do the crafts and, like, how to, like, sing the songs, some of them, like, in English, and um, just, like, explaining, like, the story of Zacchaeus and all of that. But, um, I think it was easier for my church with like how like 40 kids every night because it was easier to build connections with each of the kids and um, it was very, very like heartwarming, heart, um, warming to see like the kids like sing and just have like see them like on fire for Jesus and it was so amazing to um, meet each of them and how they welcomed um, me and the other person um, working with VBS with me and um, I'll never forget that week so yeah, it was really nice. Um, so I'll be talking about the outline of like kind of what we did so pretty much we followed what the preachers had so like every day the preachers would have a theme and we say what the preachers did. So our Bible points were day one, God reveals, and we use Daniel as an example. Day two, God leads, and his word is our light. Uh, day three, God saves, and we use Zacchaeus. Uh, day four, God provides with the Ten Commandments. Day five, God forgives with Adam and Eve. 
Day six, God promises Lazarus. Day seven, God calls and we use Jesus' baptism. And so pretty much all of this was trying to lead up to like get the kids baptized. We we're trying to have them have an open heart, you know. So like day one, God reveals, like if we have any questions, God will reveal them to us. And then day two, God leads, he'll lead our path and his word is a lamp unto our feet. Day three, God saves. So even if you feel like you're like too bad, if you've done something messed up, he'll still like forgive you as Zacchaeus and also like Adam and Eve. And day four, God provides kind of just like don't worry about anything. And it all just led up to getting baptized, like accepting that I can do everything with Christ so I don't have to worry. So, yeah. So on the trip, each of us went through all our own struggles. We were all sometimes confused. We didn't know what to do. And each of us, in our own way, learned how to let go of our worries and put our trust in God. When we first got on the bus, it was 2 a.m. We were all tired and exhausted. And we got the schedule. And Pastor Bazama, he was saying, oh, it's not like gonna go exactly as planned and some things we're gonna do, some things we're gonna, you know, not do, we're gonna, you know, add some things. And for me, that it was just kind of stressful because like I have OCD and like I have to have a schedule to survive. But when we got there, like we had our usual daily schedule of we did like sermons, VBS, construction in the morning. And then in the afternoons, we'd like, either go to the beach or we would, you know, go to town or just, you know, have fun. Or um, sometimes the schedule would be off when, like, we'd take a hike in the morning or just something would go longer than expected. And one of my jobs on the, this mission trip was to be a preacher. And the first night when I got to my church, it was... It was a little bit of a shock to me because when I got there, they said, oh yeah, you're in charge of this and that, like you're in charge of the whole service. And I had only thought that I was just gonna be in charge of preaching the sermon. And so I was just waiting there for two hours and I didn't know what to do. I'm like, who's all gonna be doing, you know, song service, the prayer and everything. And it was just all so stressful. But thankfully, two ladies got there, and they're like, oh, you don't have to worry about it. And so it, it, it was good. And um, I may or may not have that first night passed out uh, during the sermon, <laughs> preaching it in front of everyone. So it, it was super fun. And then I, my translator changed like the third night. So it just so many surprises. And... By the third night, I was like, something has like kind of got to change. My focus is off and just everything. And so during that night, during the whole service, I just sent out little prayers and I just gave all my worries to God because I knew I had to trust him. I couldn't hold on to the things that were keeping me from sharing his word. And so just throughout the service, I was like, please help me teach these people more about God. Please be with my translator. Please help me to be a light to other people. Please help the people to understand him more. And when I let go of everything, that night went really well. Everything got better. Like I, I had more emotion when I spoke. I was louder and because I'm usually normally a soft-spoken person and the translation was really good and everyone was just super blessed that night and it was amazing and just throughout the week whenever we go out in nature and watch the sunrises or you know go hiking a verse popped into my head and it was the verse from Matthew 6:34. And it says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has its own trouble of its own. And for me, I realized like God would not tell us to plan our 
whole entire life ahead of us. He's, he wanted us to, you know, worry about today and put our trust in him because he will help us. He didn't leave us alone to struggle for our, you know, fend for ourselves. He, he will be there for us, helping us along the way. And on this trip, it also taught me how to be patient with other people and how to serve. And it helped me learn how to let God take control, even though sometimes you don't feel like it. But that's, that's what I have to say. Hello. So my story actually starts about two weeks before we actually went to the Dominican Republic. Uh, I, I was doing normal life stuff, and someone approached me and asked me a question, a really life-changing question, and I was confused. I didn't know what to do. So I said I would pray about it and get back to them. And a few days go by, and another person approaches me and asks me another question that would be, again, life-changing. And this happened like three times, me just getting asked a question that I didn't know the answer to, that would definitely change my life, and I had to figure it out. So I came into the mission trip with this mindset that I would go here to a place where we are serving other people, and I would know what I was going to do. So the first day goes by, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm still going to do. And the second day goes by, still I have no idea. And by the third day, I was really confused. Like, God, why do I not know what I'm going to do? And it wasn't until the second to last day that I actually figured out what I was going to do. And it wasn't just a yes, you should do this, or no, you shouldn't do that. It was me looking back at all the experiences that we had there, looking back at how we helped others, or the fun times that we had, all of them coming together to make one decision for me. And to me, this was crazy. I asked God to help me make this decision. I was saying to God, here you go, here is my life, make a decision for me. But he didn't do it the way I thought it was. I still wanted control, basically, in that decision. But once I actually let go, look, looked back at the whole experiences, that was when God worked and worked even more amazingly than I thought he was going to. Happy Sabbath. Today, Alex and I want to share our experience that we had in the DR and how we let God take over. So in the DR, me and Marcella were preachers, and the first two nights, we took turns preaching and translating in English and Spanish. But on the third night, on the third night, we decided to preach in Spanish. And it was really scary because we didn't want to mess up but we let God take over. And sure enough, he took over and he helped us and he inspired us each night to keep preaching in Spanish. The people understood the message better and it was better to see that. Our church was an hour and a half from camp. So every night that we got there, it was pitch black and we didn't have any microphones and it was in like a little village. And no matter the circumstances, or where we were worshiping God, people still showed up because they wanted to know about God. Even our Bible worker, Pastor Carlos, told us that he had never seen two young girls only preaching in Spanish and that he had been inspired by us and we had been a blessing to our church. We made great friends and great memories and we hope one day to go back to our church and keep preaching there in Arroyo Dulce. On the last night, uh, of preaching, we, oh, we had a flat tire on the way there, and um, God made it so that we were on flat ground so that um, we were able to fix it fast. Mm -hmm. As soon as we got to our church, we started preaching, and it started raining on us. Out of every day, it rained that day, 
and it was really windy, but no matter what happened, we still got to share God's message. On that day, we bought pizza for all the kids, which is like 100 kids, and um, we also bought gifts for all of them, and they were so happy and grateful to receive everything we got for them. On the baptism day, we had 19 people baptizing from our church. Most of them were kids, but there was one special lady that was crippled and decided to get baptized. Every day at our church, we would ask, who loves God? If, um, if you want to get baptized, please stand up. And she would always find some way to stand up. Seeing that and seeing how much faith she had in God and how she let God take over her life made Alex and I want that for us in our life, that we want God to take over our lives too. This trip made me and Marcella's faith grow in God because um, all the people there, uh, they had no light sometimes, uh, they had no AC, but no matter their circumstances, they always had a lot of faith in God and trusted in Him. And that was our experience in the DR. Well, unfortunately today, if I make a mistake, you all will notice because when I was preaching in the Dominican, my Sharon, my translator, would fix my speaking errors. <laughs> so this trip was definitely challenging, as you've heard, but it was also life-changing. And something that was life-changing for me was my decision to be baptized. And <laughs> thank you. Um, where we got baptized, it, where the baptism was, it was so beautiful. It was, it was this little pond, pool um, surrounded by trees and all of the churches came together and so many, over 30 people got baptized and it was just a beautiful place. And I had made the decision before I, I went there, before um, we were there, but the reason was because I wanted a new start. And our sermon series that we preached on was called New Beginnings and How to Have Eternal Life, and that was very um, powerful. And there's so many stories I could tell, so many experiences that I had, but something that stood out to me when I first got there, we were in the airport, we had just come out, and there was so many people there. Um, and the people that stood out to me the most were the people holding signs with a name on them. And I, some of the signs I couldn't read, but they um, had names on them and they were waiting for that person to come to them so they could hug them and bring them home. And they were just waiting for them. They were so excited to see their family, their friends, and actually, my dad and my sister, they did that to me when I came back, me and my mom. And we hugged and we were so happy and we cried and we hadn't seen each other forever, actually 12 days, but it felt like forever. And um, we were just so happy to see each other. And that's what God does to us. He wants us, he's waiting for us. He's waiting for you to come to him. He's holding your name, he's standing there, so then he wants to take you home. And he wants to be with you. And before I close, um, I want to invite you to, there's a connect card in the front of your pew. Fill it out. There's also on the bulletin, there's a number you can text or a QR code. If you want to know more about Jesus, to know more about baptism, if you want to get baptized or rebaptized, just fill it out. Jesus is waiting for you. He's waiting for you to come to him, to accept him, and so then he can bring you home. He's waiting for you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day. Thank you for the ability to go on mission trips and to serve others. Thank you for the peace that we have, that if we let go and let you, it will always be perfect. Please be with those who have made a decision for you today. Help them to know you are waiting for them and want to take them home. And Lord, we pray for the for everyone here that we might all be recommitted to you today, that each of us might 
daily renew our walk with you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. As the deacons come forward, our offering today is for Conference Advance. Conference Advance goes to support ministries that serve our region. One of the examples of this is our summer camp. So as we give today, let's give with an open heart. This is also the time when you can place your connect cards with your decisions, prayer requests, and letting us know you're a first time guest in the offering plates. Mi vida está llena de ti. Mi vida está llena de ti, mi vida está llena de ti, yo sé que estás en mí. Mi vida está llena de ti, mi vida está llena de ti, mi vida está llena yo sé que estás en mí y es como un río que baña mi alma cual agua fresca que inunda mi ser y es como un río que baña mi alma que me hace vivir mi vida está llena de ti mi vida está llena de ti mi vida está llena de ti yo sé que estás en mí mi familia está mi familia está llena de ti, y ahora yo, mi familia está llena de ti, yo sé que estás aquí. palabra Señor no te dejaré y no te desampararé así que declaro que tú estás aquí Señor estás conmigo, con mi familia vamos, cántalo y decláralo mi vida está llena de ti toda mi vida que mi vida está llena de ti y oh, yo mi vida está llena de ti yo sé en mí cántalo conmigo mi vida está llena de ti y mi familia mi familia está llena de ti la tierra la tierra está llena de ti yo sé que estás aquí Y aún en el desierto, Señor, tú estás. Yo sé que estás en mí. Good. 
corazón me late sin parar Hay alguien que me ha dicho Te amo de verdad Jesús mi amor Y más que amor mi dulce paz Yo tengo un nuevo amor Jamás imaginé poderlo hallar Aquel que le dio a mi vida Una razón para amar Jesús mi amor all three verses. Let us, let us, let us, let us pray. Let us pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the way the Holy Spirit has moved in this place this morning. And for the way that you moved through the mission trip and every single day in our evangelism series at our schools and our homes. Let every young person in this place never ever forget that the best way to live is to let, let go and to let your spirit guide them and take them where they never dreamed they could go and to do the things they never dreamed they could do. Send them off, Lord, from this beautiful little campus in Loveland. Send them off to wherever it is you want them to change, to change and transform whatever place they go. In Jesus' name, we say, amen. <laughs>